Welcome to another edition of the Live It Full podcast. This is Richard. I've got Caitlin in the studio with me today. And a little little bit of business to take care of up front. If you're enjoying the content you're getting on the podcast, if you've listened to all of them and you think that you're getting value from it, hit the subscribe button. Leave us a five-star review because those two things help other people find us. Also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, what else we got? Facebook, YouTube, go to all of those things, uh, leave us reviews there, like us, subscribe, do all of those things. Take a screenshot. I know it sounds silly, but when you take a screenshot and you tag us and you share it on your stories or you share it on um, your post, it does help people find us that might not normally help spread the word about living at full. But today we're going to talk a little bit about our, what we consider our fourth priority in life behind faith, family, and finances, travel. It's something that we both uh, connected on at a uh, when we first met. Probably, it's one of the things that we both talked about having a passion for, and it kind of was thinking about it this week because I finally unfollowed a hashtag that I had followed a long time since we started this journey with Live It Full, which was hashtag Travel Bloggers on Instagram. Well, I finally unfollowed it because what I realized was what I thought a, a travel blogger did was somewhat of what we do. We document our trips. We share with you some of the best uh, tips, fails, and uh, destinations that we go to through live it full forward slash or forward slash blog. But what I found on Instagram, all travel bloggers do is roll around in the sand half naked and take pictures in very beautiful locations. But I found I was really tired of looking at scantily clad men and women um, who hashtagged travel bloggers. So I finally unfollowed that, but it made me think as a family, as a family of six now, what, what are some of our travel tips? Some of our, I mean, let's just be honest. Those pictures always look beautiful and perfect when you, when you hashtag travel bloggers. I don't ever see any of the travel, you know, hashtag travel blog fails. Right. Um, and so we have some of those we want to share today just to show that uh, life's not always perfect, but it's a, it's a beautiful ride, right? Right. I am. Um... I, I love traveling and it's not something that I grew up doing a whole lot of with my family. Uh, we did go some places and I lived in a location that was, um, central to a lot of other places. And so we didn't have to make a big week or week, even long weekend out of some, some of it, we would leave on a Friday after my parents got off of work, um, or after school, and then we'd be back Sunday or it was just a day trip. Um, and then Richard also didn't really travel much as a kid. And so I feel like, uh, when we were able to start doing that as a, as a new married couple, we just kind of fell in love with it. And it was the first time that we were able to maybe, I mean, it was budget, uh, sensitive at the time, but we could, we could pick up and kind of go where we wanted to go. Um, and anyway, so fast forward to us having children and now our children have gone as many places almost as we have. And, um, we know that they're lucky and, and it's just a life. We that, know that, but I'm not sure that they know that all the time. And that's something that we, we do have to work with them on because they had passports. At least our older two had their passports. One of them's laying down as a baby in the picture. Right. And so, but it's, it's fun. And that's just something that we have deemed important in our family life. And so, um, it's just something that we've always budgeted for and, and made a priority for. And so with that, I had to learn how to do it with a bunch of small kids on my own, because my mom never flew anywhere with us as babies. Um, I didn't have I didn't live that experience. And so I've learned kind of over the years, um, a couple of things. Anyway, one, um, of my biggest travel tips is knowing that you can get most everything at a Walmart. Um, this, I used to just stress out about, I know I forgot something. I know I forgot something. Well, guess what, what you forgot you can, you can get now. Do you want to have to go buy something? No, um, but at Walmart, you can usually get by pretty affordable. So something she picked up for me because I'm not always the planner and she is. And I said, you know what? I bet we can get that at Walmart if we forget it. So I will say it's maybe some, one thing that of, of me, that's a positive thing rubbed off on you. It's the truth, but I don't like to forget things and we're already spending money on a vacation. And so if we already have, you know, pajamas for our oldest daughter, I don't want to have to go buy pajamas, uh, 
But honestly, in that case, I would probably just give her one of my t-shirts and make her sleep in that. And that's one tip that I didn't think of as I was writing them down is you would be surprised. And we do RV a lot. So this may not be as applicable to the RV crowd, but we, we, we do occasionally stay at hotels. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, And so hotels will surprisingly have a lot of things they will give you if you just ask. Yeah. And so we've forgotten toothbrushes. We've forgotten phone chargers. If you call down to the front desk at a nice hotel and say, Hey, do you have an iPhone charger down there somewhere? They have one in the lost and found, or they have them and they'll bring you one. They've brought us toothbrushes, dry shampoo. I mean, all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't normally think is a um, complimentary item. Right. But if you ask for it, it is. So that would be one good travel tip is never be afraid to ask a hotel for something. Right. Um, But with packing, I mean, we all make lists or either mentally or on paper. Um, And I tend to do like, because I do me and the kids and then Richard packs himself. So um, I tend to do everything like all pajamas and that's just what works for me. So I'll go get mine, you know, and then all the children. And so I haven't forgotten somebody's pajamas because I did all of that at once. Um, so that is helpful to me. And I make stacks on the foot of my bed. I've done it like that forever. Um, another thing is you can't pack when things are dirty. And so one of my travel tips would be to get all the laundry done before you start packing or all the stuff that you think you might need to take. You can leave the sheets or the towels or stuff you're not going to bring. Um, but I like to have all of my clothes completely washed so that I know what I can make outfits out of basically. Um, and then you can't pack everything a day or two before, cause you still have to use your toiletries, your makeup, your whatever. Um, so back in, a, in another episode, I talked about a whiteboard being on our refrigerator. I like it. Um, it's useful and it's like a family center. And so if I put on there like max pillow or his sound machine or something that he's going to have to use the night before, um, and I can't pack it, but I know I have everything else. I will write on the whiteboard, the last few things that have to go in a stroller, um, what have you. And so the next day phone chargers. So the next day when we're all packing, um, Richard doesn't have to ask me, what else do we need? If it's on the list, then you can cross it off if you've already taken it to the car. Um, But that's sort of how I keep all those last minute things organized. When I think about it, I write it up there and then we don't leave the house until it's either erased or crossed off. You know, and one thing that I thought about with that is when we're um, traveling by air, um, it's a lot if you try to take a suitcase for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Even when we've traveled with just Mac being very small, because he's only flown a couple of times. The girls have flown many times. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't been on as many, well, COVID partly, and he's right. only three, um, the year prior to that, it, we just had a lot going on where we haven't done a lot of air travel with, with Mac yet, but even with five of us, it's a lot to, you can't take that many suitcases. Even if you're allowed them on the airport, just even carrying them in physically is difficult. You'll, you'll see there's pictures on our face, personal Facebooks of kids in Europe. I think our oldest two riding on suitcases while I'm pulling them. Cause we didn't, I mean, we couldn't carry them and you have suitcases. And she didn't want to walk. Right. And so there's, there's a challenge there, but one thing that one thing that we do that I think has worked really well, and it's, it's a smart thing to do if you're checking bags is we will all put outfits in one bag mm-hmm. for everybody. That way, if, if one bag were to get lost or misplaced that we still have clothes for all of us when we get there. Because this has happened and I guess it could go under the heading of travel fail. Um, But when we were coming back from Europe, our stroller didn't get back with us. And we still, to this day, have never seen it, even though they're supposed to be a tracking and a phone Oh, it's in a storage building at DFW somewhere. That was an interesting, that is, there is some fail stories there, but we traveled for about 27 hours straight coming back from Norway. And you know, you get to go through what we call TSA. Um, You get to go through it. Norway is not in the EU. So when you go from Norway to London, so you start out in Norway, go through security. When you get to London, you have to go back through security. Customs. Yeah. Well, no, it's just security there. But then in Dallas, you go through customs Customs, again to get on a domestic flight to leave. So you go through it three times where you're pulling everything out of your bag. We're normally on connecting flights in the U S you don't have to go back through. Well, when you're not prepared for that and you have children with you, it can be a challenge. Yeah. And the lines are so long. 
my favorite airport We've in the world. We've already had to um, be on a plane for however many hours. That that trip was train travel and then plane travel yep. and then a two hour customs whatever line at the airport. Um, and in London, they put us in a room. And once you got in that room, you couldn't leave, remember? And there was no restroom. <laughs> yeah, it was like a terminal. Once you checked in for your flight, you went into that terminal room and you couldn't leave. Or right. You had to go back through. Right. Yeah, I do recall that. It yeah. was quite challenging. So anyway, and and I was newly pregnant that trip with Mac. And so I was pregnant with the two little ones, um, you know, flying trains, all of that, which we loved and we thought was fun. They probably were bored. They actually did pretty awesome on that trip. So we took them on a Baltic cruise. Um, We left from Dallas and went to Stockholm first, then through uh, Finland, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, um, back to to Sweden and then to Norway for three days. We took a train from Stockholm to, to Oslo. Pretty amazing experience for us. And I didn't want to take the children, but Caitlin said she wasn't going without them. So we compromised. Um, th- that is another thought that I want to tip. Don't be afraid to uh, check a stroller. Mm-hmm. I know people that have always, they rent, sometimes we rent strollers when we go to like Orlando, um, depending because they have good Orlando stroller rental companies mm-hmm. um, that other, other cities may not have the same thing just because it's a tourist destination in Orlando for Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't be afraid. I mean, granted, I say we say that in the same breath that we said we didn't get that one stroller back. Um, but we have yeah. checked our own stroller plenty of times and, and never had an issue. And it is really nice to have a stroller in the airport. Well, you can wheel it up to the line and then they just Jump carry out. it down last minute. Yep. Um, and then they bring it up to you when you're getting off. Sometimes they'll make you check it in the baggage check, but most of the time they'll let it. you, it, it is most of the time they'll let you, um, take it to the actual, to your, um, what are that gangway? Yeah you know, in your terminal and then they'll, they'll, they'll kind of gate check it is what that's called. Right. Yes. Gate check. All right. So back to getting on track with some more tips. Um, I think one of the biggest things is when you're traveling with children, whether it's air in the truck, in the car, wherever you are, um, it, it takes a level of planning that I used to not be comfortable with because especially if you're pulling an RV, um, or you're in an RV, you have to kind of plan your stops to where you you can stop places that, um, number one, we'll accommodate a vehicle of that size. And number two, we don't, we've pushed our kids 12 to 13 hours a day traveling to say Yellowstone, mm-hmm. um, because you want to break that up as much as you can. Cause if it was a straight drive without an RV, it'd still take probably 18 hours from where we are. So you break that into two days, but we've learned that we can't push our kids in the car much further than three to four hours at a stint. Um, one of them, yes. One of them, she'd probably be fine all day. The other ones, you kind of have to stop and let them get out, stretch their legs. So we kind of try to plan things where we can stop and find a park or do something where they can get out and get some energy out, um, get off their uh, electronics, whether it's iPads or watching movies. And so planning is paramount, but also being flexible in that. So I, I'm going to say in one breath, you have to plan, 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 but be flexible when those things don't work out the way you want them to. Um, for the sake of the plan. There have been lots of times that we say, when we get to this town, we'll stop for lunch. Well, if two out of the three children are asleep, we're not stopping. (laughs) We're going to wait till the next town then, Um, you know, because it's important that they sleep if, if they're tired and that's what they want to do. And we'll get an hour closer. Um, So, yeah. So, I mean, plan, but a flexible plan. For sure. And another thing is if you're new to the RV world or you're thinking about it, um, not Caitlin or some of the kids' favorite restaurant, but Cracker Barrel mm-hmm. always has RV parking in the back or bus parking. I like Cracker and Barrel. It, it is super convenient, but we probably eat at Cracker Barrel too frequently on RV trips. I just don't just like because it as much that. as you. <laughs> yeah, who, why can't you, you eat like, Cracker Barrel three times? You like a, Cracker Barrel a lot. Well, that's okay. Yeah, but I think some of it too is we talked about it. And I think the first podcast that we did was uh, one of our trips. Um, I got really frustrated believe it or not with the, um, with the children as we're driving around the small loop at or the, the lower loop, sorry, at Yellowstone, because they did not seem to appreciate being in the car for six or seven hours, getting out periodically to see old faithful, um, the prismatic pool or bison or, you know, whatever we were doing, they did not appreciate it on the same level that I did. 
And so my expectations were they damn sure should appreciate this. We just drove 11 hours from, I think we had left from Pueblo, Colorado that day, got to, got to Alpine, Wyoming. And I figured the kids should appreciate that the next day. And they didn't appreciate it as much as I would have liked them to. And I got frustrated and that's not fair to them. Right. Because my expectations were different. So part of it is managing your own expectations with traveling with children. Mm -hmm. Um, There are things that I would have loved to have done um, in Europe the last time that we went that we weren't able to do because we had small children with us, but that's okay. Caitlin and I'll get to go back another day. Yeah. And if we we don't take kids. We even considered not going into Russia because at the time it was kind of. There had been a bombing in St. Petersburg where we were going going. in the subway and. Um, as we're cruising through the Baltic, there's NATO planes flying over. There were a lot of tensions with Russia and um, the Baltic states. It was right after mm-hmm. the Crimea annexation. And um, we were going into what I'll call European Russia into St. Petersburg. But yeah, there was, um, it's a different ball game too. You want to talk about border security. I'm not going to get into political stuff in the US, but like in the EU, you can go from country to country, no problem um, with an American passport. Um, they don't even really check it if you're going from one country to the next. You go into Russia, you have to have a visa. You have to have a Russian tour guide who's licensed and certified to go with you. Um, that's you, another story. They look at you with like a mean, stern look, take off your hat. Oh, yeah. You have to go through customs when you go into Russia, whereas in the rest of like the EU, you don't. And so it's a different experience for sure. Um, and it, and rightfully so, probably. It was a different, mm-hmm. you know, Russia is probably one of my favorite places we've been, St. Petersburg anyways. Um, for a couple different reasons. And, and that kind of gets us into some of the next stuff. We wanted to talk a little bit about our top travel destinations and some of the things that we've gotten to do through the years. And I, I would say that St. Petersburg's on my list in my top five, mainly not necessarily because of what we did there or the time we didn't get, we got maybe eight hours in, in St. Petersburg at the most. Um, Cause if you're off the boat on a cruise, you have to be with a tour guide. Mm-hmm. So we did pay for a tour. We went to the Hermitage, which is the old winter palace or some, yeah, it's the winter palace for the Romanov dynasty. Catherine the Great built it an amazing, amazing thing. We saw Da Vinci's, we saw a room full, Gorgeous. not a couple Rembrandts. There is a Rembrandt room mm-hmm. that is the big, it's as big as most people's house, just full of Rembrandts. Mm-hmm. Got to see the prodigal, which is probably one of my most, uh, you know, one of my favorite paintings of all time that Rembrandt did. Um, but the, what I found really interesting about St. Petersburg was that you had this Soviet era architecture. You had these very sterile concrete apartments it was crazy. that were, you know, state owned during the, during the uh, communist era. And then in contrast, within a mile, you have these palaces that are opulent, mm-hmm. 300,000 square feet places that the Romanov dynasty where they lived. Mm -hmm. And to me, just the, uh, seeing that stark, stark contrast between the, um, what would have been the czars, a czar era, Russia, the empire versus communist era, Russia were so strikingly different. And we saw that in some other countries too, Estonia, we were there in freedom day for Estonia, um, Latvia, we saw some of the old Soviet bloc countries and it's just, uh, I I appreciate capitalism. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, What, what made me kind of sad when we're thinking about that though, is every single tour guide that we had, um, always commented on the fact that they were not Christian. They didn't know very many Christian people. It like, it was like more of a fad or something there. Um, and they just, I don't know if it was a fad. It it was, um, you know, they've just Europe in general has lost a lot of the religion. It, it has. And, and they said that they said, I really, secular. you know, we'll go to church on Christmas and Easter, e- even the Christian ones. Um, but, but that's it. We don't, we don't attend. And it was just, I guess, odd to me. Maybe they felt like they had to tell us because we were American tourists and they know America church. I, I, I don't well, we, know. We, we toured some churches, um, which was a little bit different in like Norway than, um, when we had been to Europe the first time when we did Southern, like the Mediterranean side of Europe, we went to some of the most amazing cathedrals in the world in Valencia in Barcelona. Um, where else did we see a cool, some cool th- cathedrals, uh, Mallorca, Mallorca, 
Um, so a lot of the Spanish cathedrals, um, and we didn't get that so same beautiful. vibe from them though in Spain and in France um, well, that we did in Northern Europe. I think they do. We just at that time didn't didn't necessarily experience it. We weren't listening. It for was it. just like the fifth or sixth time that somebody said finally, like, "Oh well, you know, not not many people here go to church, or not many people here are believers, or however it is that they put it." And I just thought, wow, okay. Like, I don't know, just a difference, something that you probably would not hear on a tour here. Like they wouldn't highlight that. For sure. So Caitlin, out of the top places that we traveled the past 10 years or so, um, because when we first got married, we didn't get to travel as much as we would like. Um, Just financially, it was, we didn't understand budgeting then, I think. Um, But tell me, what's one of the favorite spots that you've been? Goodness. Um, Italy, if I'm picking out of the country and I think probably our Arkansas trip. And I said that the other day, um, here, and I don't know why I loved it so much. I think it's just because, um, it was easy. It was fun. Everybody had a good time. I don't remember any, like, I just remember fun on that trip. And I remember fun on all of our trips. I just, I don't know. I, I am, uh, usually either pregnant or <laughs> home with, you know, home, wherever it is, the hotel or the RV, um, with one of the younger children and Richard is off doing some fun now, hold thing. On. That is totally not true. It Who is has, too. You went zip lining with Macy on that trip and that's, I stayed home with the that's kids. That's what I was going to say. It was probably fun. Cause I got to go do stuff. Okay. I'll give you that then. Um, I can think of some other times that, that you have done stuff that I have not, or I have offered. I'll let you ride roller coasters with Macy all day long. Yeah. Just because you don't want to. You went and did bippity boppity boutique and Cinderella's table without me with just Macy. That time they made her look like white trash Barbie. Yeah. You told me you didn't want to, and that you'd rather go back to the room with Meredith so she could take a nap. And we did take a good nap. Exactly. So what do you, so with that in mind, um, it, I honestly, I, I said, I like St. Petersburg and it's probably one of my favorite places, but if there was one place out of the U S if we were going to be expats and move somewhere outside of the political climate and the taxation, like there's some other things I probably wouldn't agree with, but, um, I could definitely live in Mallorca. Yeah. It's the largest Island in the Mediterranean. I think at least on the Spanish side, um, it's a pretty amazing Island and the culture and the people were great. Yeah. If you think about like, um, a Latin, uh, energized people, like they were all really theatrical. Our tour guide was super, uh, go, go, go really, really sweet. Um, remember she told us that her like kids party people, like yeah. I think of Miami or something. Yeah. Like you're down in, down in, uh, in Rio or something like yeah. that's, and then there's, there's obviously a cultural connection between, uh, central and South America and Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, she was funny because she told us that her kids, um, learned how to speak English partially because they learned English in, in primary school as well as Spanish and Portuguese, I believe. Um, but they, she told us that she, her kids learned how to learned a lot of English from the Lion King. Or like from, from American cartoons. TV, they, yeah. they watch cartoons and they have to learn from that. And but so she did that whole hike, that whole tour wearing those kitten heels. Do you yeah. remember that? Uh-huh. And I just thought we hiked through some castles. You, how are you wearing high heels right now? It was really shocking, but it was anyway. Um, so just, you know, we could go on and on and on and on and on about travel. We love it. All the things that we've done, the places that we've been. Um, but I think as you were talking about your Instagram hashtag earlier, uh, we were talking about what is Instagram sort of travel picture, perfect travel. Cause any trip we could take pictures and post them on social media. And it looks like we have it all together. We have this (laughs) fun life and we are just like mom and dad that don't make mistakes. We didn't argue the whole way here. A snapshot of a moment in time right. was perfect. Right. Um, and so and we as humans do have a tendency to only show the highlights. That's the problem with social media sometimes is we one thing that Caitlin and I try to always do is be super transparent, um, especially with our children when we fail, but even on social media and in our with our with our followers and with our listeners that we um we occasionally screw the pooch. Now a caveat here is I do not think it's appropriate and, and neither does Richard. So we agree in this, um, thankfully 
but I don't think it's appropriate to point out or like post pictures of my child throwing a fit or oh, for sure. disciplining or anything like that. Like, I don't want my kids to look back on something in 10 years that I've said or done or posted on my social media that would be embarrassing to them. Like, that's not fair. Everybody. Well, it's going to be embarrassing to them when they're teenagers because they're embarrassed by everything. But I do understand what you're saying. And right. And I also wouldn't call them out um, publicly like this by name if it was something that we don't laugh about now. Now, at the time, so most of these situations, we're going to talk a little bit about travel fails. And most of these situations, um, they're not Instagram perfect. And at the time, we may not have laughed. But no, looking back at the time, it might have been like, I'm giving you the silent treatment for the rest of the day because I don't want to talk to you. And that has happened before. The good thing is when you're driving 12 hours, you can do that and just not look at each other. Right. Um, <laughs> But I will say, so we do RV. We talk about that quite a bit. Um, I First time we took out, first RV we ever bought, we bought a 29-foot bumper pool um, bunkhouse. Um, you were pregnant with Mac at the time, and we did not plan ahead because we bought a bumper pool with two bunks. Mm -hmm. And within a year, we decided we needed a bigger trailer. Um, but the first time we went out, we went down to a place in Burnett, Texas called Canyon of the Eagles on Lake Buchanan. Um, took me two hours to set up the trailer, something that I can do probably in 15, I mean, 10 minutes now, max. Mm -hmm. um, but the first time you go out, you don't know what you're doing. But anyways, we're into that trip. I think your dad had met us up there and we're, we're camping, you know, the kids are outside and we've got a fire going and we see some water coming out off the side of the trailer. And I immediately, I'm looking, I'm like, well, I think it's the air conditioner condensation. Yeah, Cause if you know, it. most travel trailers have like a, a, a gutter kind of groove on the top, it drops down condensation from the AC. Um, and then we were like, no, that's a little too much water. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of water dripping out of there. Well, on that trailer, the, um, the bathroom faucet handles turned backwards, like what you would think is lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. It went backwards. So, yeah. um, I'm not sure which girl it was. It was Macy or Meredith. Um, my money's on Meredith, but, it also had a stopper that kind of you could screw down. Well, she washed her hands after she went potty, turned, you know, did her business, washed her hands, um, and left the water on and left the stopper down. And we flooded the trailer. Yeah. Opened the door and the entire floor was wet. And I thought, okay, great. So first trailer spent a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money and time getting ready a lot of money and time. And here we go. We've ruined it. So yep. the good thing is trailers are pretty, um, pretty hardy when it comes to those things. That trailer did not have any carpet. It was all vinyl flooring and we got it dried up and no ill effects from it. Yeah. But on your first trip ever out with an RV, you think, man, we, we just flooded that. I do think we laughed about it that night. Cause we were all just like, what just happened? Well, Cause I think we realized uh, shortly after we got it cleaned up that, okay, this didn't like ruin our brand new trailer. Yeah. So anyway, so that was, we'll lead up to another trailer story. Um, and we had two years ago, almost had bought a um, larger trailer, a fifth wheel, um, quite a bit more room has its own bunk room and we've created four bunks in there. Um, and so that all our children can have their own little space in the, in the bunk room, um, much nicer for us. First time we went out, I've pulled trailers a long time. I'm very comfortable pulling trailers, uh, backing them up, doing kind of everything trailer. It's the first time I've had a fifth wheel. I had a short bed F-250. And I, being an insurance, you being an insurance, we've seen enough claims where people have put their trailer into the cab of the truck and broken windows or damaged their trailer and or truck to know better. Let's just preface it with that because surprisingly, we see three or four claims a year you know, where those things do happen. Um, and so like, I knew better kids were yelling. We're trying to back into a really tight space. I was going to say, it's a really, like you didn't have a didn't. lot of room though. No. And I should have thought it out differently and pulled, pulled up a lot further and done something just a little more. Uh, there was a tree, it was an overflow area at a campground, but we wanted to get the new trailer out and try it before we went anywhere big. So we went to well, a local we state had park. Our big, we had our big trip already planned. Right. But we wanted to get it out and get, yeah. get a little test run close to home before, um, before we actually went out. And um, yeah, I'll be danged if I didn't put that um, brand new fifth wheel into the cab of my truck. Yep. Did quite a bit of damage to both. Um, <laughs> I was in a pretty bad mood about it. Let's just be honest. But I was screaming because I could hear it crunching. Yeah. Like, and I her was crying the, doesn't I help me. You, Maybe I did. You cry. did certainly start having some well, tears. The problem is he, he was turning and I heard the crunching and I was like, stop, stop, stop. 
stop. And he's like, what do you want me to do? I can't do anything else. I have to like finish this move or however Well, you have to, you got to come back around and get it off your, off there. So it kind of hits it again in the process. Um, but you know, trailers can be fixed. Um, I didn't fix the truck, so it worked out. I just had a pretty good dent in the back of the cab. Um, but you know, next time maybe we'll invest in a headache rack or what I actually did is went and bought a long bed. Now I don't have that problem whatsoever. I can turn anywhere I want. Right. Um, so that was our first trip out in our fifth wheel. That was travel number two, fail number yeah, two. Yeah, fail number two. Um, I'll let you take another one. Well, the most recent one that we just had two weekends ago. Um, Part of what made us think about um, discussing our travel fails. Yeah. So we went somewhere. It was another travel trailer trip. We took our fifth wheel. And we're pretty seasoned at this point. I mean, I know how to get the inside of the trailer ready and pull in all the slides and the whole process is pretty smooth at this point. Um, yeah, we're good. Teamwork makes the dream work. Right. We, so we knock it out together. So coming back, we planned to stop in this town um, for lunch and one easy stop is McDonald's. Well, none of us could have that again. I don't like it. My kids really don't like it. Richard's telling one Richard that likes, likes McDonald's. It, but I don't care what Richard wants because he got it on the way up. Anyways, um, so I'm I'm Googling on my phone open restaurants in this town, and there was this pizza place that came up, and all the kids were like, Yeah, 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 let's have pizza. So, okay, great. So we we pull around, and first of all, we get to this address, there's no pizza place. So that was already like Okay. Let's, yeah, somebody needs to have Google Ma- update Google Maps on that because right. it, it had not been there. Before. When we live with our phones now and buy our phones, I want it to be right. But anyway, so we get there, no pizza place. So we have to turn this thing around, which is a process in and of itself. And we're coming back and there's this like empty caliche lot behind a Sonic. Yeah. And it's kind of, I think it's overflow parking for a couple of the hotels that are on the interstate there. Mm-hmm. And there were two big rigs. And so we said, okay, we're just going to pass the Sonic, turn down this street, come beside one of these semis and use that as overflow parking. Cause we're probably only 10 or 12 feet shorter than a semi. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a big, I mean, setup. Our, our trailer is about 41 foot uh-huh. throwing the trucks. Not much different. I mean, I guess tr- semis pull 53 foot trailers in general. So, but I mean, we're, we're not much smaller in that right. regard. No, it's a, it's a big rig- setup thing anyway. So now we have our two and a half month old with us. So I said, okay, just pull up beside that thing. We're going to um, pull the slide out in our fifth wheel. You run up, get everybody Sonic, order it from the window, and we'll go out in the trailer, let the kids eat, run around, stretch their legs, whatever. And before anybody starts messaging me about putting a fifth wheel slide out, not being stabilized or with the jacks down, I get it. So we don't do it often, but we will put out a dinette slide so we can sit down and eat occasionally. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there because somebody's going to message me and tell me you shouldn't do that. It's not good for the frame. I, mean, I, I know it's not, but we occasionally do it. And it's a lifesaver. Another so travel tip. Another travel tip. Um, so anyway, we, we pull up and I look over and I'm like, hmm, that semi is hauling bees, like bees that will sting you. Yeah. Um, I a will, I will post a picture when we, when we put this out there and put it on the YouTube um, channel because I've never seen this before. I mean, it's literally a 53 foot trailer stacked eight feet high with bee boxes. Like you see beekeepers keep mm-hmm. with you would a screen think, around it. Well, you would think to yourself, like surely that is secured. Well, I mean, it's a semi full of bees. People are allergic to bees. We don't want our bees to get out. Like we need to get them to the location wherever we're taking them. Well, I got out with the baby and I went back to the trailer and Richard's getting out with all the rest of the children. And I hear what sounds like hail on our trailer. Okay. And it's hailing bees into our trailer, like hitting the sides of our trailer. This semi pulls away. And so we're just left with a swarm of bees and they're looking for their hives, I guess. Yeah, I guess our trailer is a color that was similar enough to that, the hives on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a cream, mm-hmm. you know, with some whites. Um, I don't know if bees can see color. I'm assuming they can, if they got, I mean, that's something we learned in biology. Um, I'm sure they can, if they can see flowers, but 
regardless, I tried to get out to get the kids. <laughs> She's already in the trailer with the baby feeding her. I try to get out with the other three and get to the trailer door and bees start just hitting my face, my head. <laughs> um, I was wearing a red shirt, so I think they can't see color because they weren't happy about what I was wearing. They just start hitting me, which I, they weren't stinging me, which I know is a defensive thing for bees when they're not happy. They will, they will just kind of pop you, run into you. And so the so kids are I'm screaming. I'm watching this out the window. And at first I'm laughing. Like, yeah, I, wish oh, it, I wish somebody would have videoed it. <laughs> there's, there's bees. But anyway, so, so they had to like take cover back in the truck. And oh, then yeah, I take stuck. cover. I, I'm running over there, throwing kids back, you know, <laughs> picking up our nine-year-old, throwing her back in the truck and they're so screaming I'm, what's going on. And I'm like, there's bees everywhere. Yeah. So I'm stuck in the trailer and now I'm terrified at this point because I mean, hundreds hundreds of bees around the windows no, the door definitely thousands whatever I mean, a lot it was clouds it, it was um and, and we're not being exaggerated i mean no. we're not exaggerating no. like, i couldn't like they're all over the truck at this point too mm -hmm. and the kids are freaking out saying they're going to get in the truck are there any in the truck and of course my mind being an idiot that i am i go well there probably are some in the truck by now you know and so then our oldest freaks out just a tad bit because I told her there were bees in the truck, but I just answered her in a truthful manner that I thought, yeah, there probably could be bees in the truck. Um, there weren't, I don't think nobody got stung. Um, but I decided, well, I'll go check and see, I'll get out, leave the kids. I'll go check and see if, um, the bees have left and Caitlin calls me and she's like, it sounds like it's hailing. Mm -hmm. Like they're just bumping the trailer trying to get into the hive. I think yeah and uh so i go out there i'm looking i mean they're swarming like our air conditioners at that point mm -hmm. i mean just like thousands of them like i mean like a beehive you see like on the side of a house when they've swarmed um and so that was nice i mean well, it just goes to show you like we are seasoned rv travelers at this point we know how to do that we know how to plan that's not something you can plan for like things just still happen you know? Yeah, they put me in a bad mood. Um, there's a quote that I always try to say the difference. It's it's from a gentleman who his legal name is Bob Bitchin. He was given a nickname of that. I don't know his real name. He was given that nickname by um, Cheech and Chong, one of them. I'm not sure if it was Cheech Marin or Chong, um, but he was given that nickname in the 70s. Um, but one of his famous quotes is in one of his books is, the difference between an ordeal and an adventure is attitude. So sometimes I have to consciously think, Hey, this is an adventure we're going to talk about, but right now it's an ordeal. Um, yeah. and so, but yeah, I got a little bit frustrated with it because, well, he was thinking like, okay, I have to get my family now safely all into the truck and out of here because like Sonic was not happening anymore at this point. Anyway, we ended up driving across the street to a truck stop. And yeah, once you hit, you're, you're leaving out some parts of that. So I went and finally just said, open the door to the trailer and there's still bees everywhere. And I, and I said, give me the baby. <laughs> and I took the baby and went and basically tossed her in her car seat in the truck. And then left. we wrapped I mean, her in a big blanket yeah, first and removed myself from stung. that situation. Let Caitlin get into the truck. Finally, she ran. Um, yeah. And then I had to go put in the slide and the stairs. And um, I went ahead and changed shirts and hats because for whatever reason, I don't think the bees liked the colors I was wearing. I put on a much more muted color and had no more issues when I got out of the truck. Yeah, but the ridiculous. bees were still on the trailer as we left. Yeah. Like, I mean, thousands of them. And it, so you just never know. Right. Yeah. You just, you never, ever, ever know. Um, we got lost we have, in France one time. We got lost in France. It was in Nice. Caitlin and I walked around and we had um, old Rick Steve's book. Like uh -huh. we should have known what we were doing, right? Well, we everything didn't know we, what we were doing. Yeah. Train station was under construction. All the signs were down, which we couldn't read Rue, whatever it was. Anyways, we walked around for like three or four hours and, um, and all those French people that day acted like they didn't know English. Like we kept asking people and they're like, no English. Yeah. All of them. It was, it was that, or they just, they didn't want to help us, but we found a little section of uh, little Britain or, I mean, it was like the UK area of Nice uh -huh. and they were, there were people that were quite helpful. Yeah, but these people that were telling we, us that we didn't know English, we heard talking in English. Yeah, they said that they didn't the know issue. English. Yeah, no, no, they were just didn't want to And I'm not saying it's a French thing, no. uh, but, you know, the French did not help us in the uh, UK transplants that lived in Nice. But everybody talks about the south of France, like it's just so wonderful. And there's that film festival and whatever. Richard and I did not have a good south of France experience. No, Monaco is pretty amazing. Um, nice. Um, 
and in, in some of the other places, Con, I was not impressed with personally. There's a town called Easy E. Like, yeah. I don't know how to say it, but it was easy. Nice and easy. Easy E. And there was another American there. And Nice is N I C E. And then this other town is Easy E, however you say that. And I was trying to say something to Richard, and over our shoulder, this guy says, I don't know. I just keep calling it nice and easy. <laughs> Which is probably why the French don't like us. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we walked around for hours trying to find that train station. And you know, it's just a small world. Um, granted, we were on a trip that was a, a incentive type deal. So there, are, there were from some other people from a company we were with. Um, but we sat down on a train after that, after like three hours and exhausted. And we looked up and literally the two people sitting in front of us live in a town 60 miles from us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just kind of surreal to look up and realize that uh, I think they were staring at us because we looked, we got on the train pretty defeated. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. we were like, oh, thank God we're in the right place if y'all are here. And we rode back with them and it was a good time. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do want to bring up. So you bring, mentioned Arkansas. Um, you know, the great thing about technology is like you can find your iPhone when you lose it. Um, this is a story. Caitlin's making a face at me in the studio. Um, but we can't find her phone. We're in the Mid-American Science Museum in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is an amazing destination if you have children. If you ever make it to Hot Springs, go to the Mid-American Science Museum for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but she's like, I can't find my phone. I don't know if I set it down somewhere where we had stopped and we we're doing stuff with the kids. And so um, we're looking for it. And I'm like, well, I'll turn on, you know, I can track you from my phone, right? And uh, we're looking at it. it's movement all over the museum. So we're like, somebody has it. So we go to the lost and we go to the front desk, lost and found. We're like, has anybody turned in an iPhone? No, nah, nobody's turned one in. And we're like, okay, it's moving that way. It's like that way. It's like that way. Well, we're like chasing it at this point because we think somebody's got our phone. They're trying to leave with it. Um, it's always like just evading us just by a little, like we almost get there. So about an hour into this escapade, we realize that it's in our own stroller and the GPS was getting it close to us. But every time we moved, it moved. <laughs> and um i guess it was you know maybe we didn't have great service um we thought it was chasing us it was literally six canopy. inches away from me the whole time yeah it was good time so that's another good travel fail that um we did not laugh about that day no and we have a lot of we have a lot of the normal stories of kids throwing up or you know uh, just random things happening bad directions or car issues or you, you have all of those things those are just some of the, the bigger ones i feel like that we've uh that we've experienced through two through some of, of the these. four of our children so far we don't know about mia yet are um get car sick and so like when we went to colorado and we were driving through the mountains well i guess that's a travel fail we already booked a trip at the ski resort and then covid attacked and it was a year ago, like a week and a half ago, whatever the first day that places started shutting down in the U S we were heading to Granby, Colorado to ski. Yeah. And like we were already in route or else we may have just canceled our trip, but we were already like in Colorado driving. Yeah, we still. were, we were in, um, when we in got New to Mexico still getting close to Colorado. So I mean, still good six hours from home, six, seven, halfway there. When we got, we heard on the radio that the governor had shut down the ski resorts. Ski resorts, yeah. But we were going to be able to see family anyway, so we just decided to make the most of it. But anyway, Granby Ski Ranch, if you're listening, you still owe us a voucher or our money back because you wouldn't refund it, and we have not been able to get up there. Just well, uh, we then, weren't happy about it because you wouldn't give us. Well, it was COVID, and then we had a baby, and so we couldn't go this winter because I had a baby in December. Yeah, I'm just so. saying that anyways, I was not thrilled with their customer service. So if they want to make it right, they can do it now. Just throwing it out there. Anyway, um, but in the mountains of Colorado, our son, like we hear him start. Oh, I didn't even think about this as a fail. No, this is, would, this is a good one. Yeah, he, we hear him start getting sick and he's like, oh, my tummy hurts. Um, anyway, he got sick and as soon as we pulled up I had to strip his shirt I mean we were like 10 minutes away from the house maybe like 30 yeah because it's kind of you're going up the mountain and so it's, it's a short drive um in there was miles, nothing we could do right then but it's not a short drive there's no be, safe because shoulder you go 15 miles an hour the whole time or 20 but you're going up the mountains yeah. and it's round and round and round and i just thought mac honey i am so sorry but like i can't look back there or else we're both going to be sick so i just have to keep looking forward 
he's sick, car sick. It's it's the worst. And Richard doesn't get it because he doesn't get car sick, but it's the worst feeling ever. Yeah, and for sure. So, so anyway, I forgot about that, but it does make me think we'll we'll end up on this travel fail because there's a couple more from that trip. Now, overall, what I would say is that was a very great trip. It was a good it, trip. One of the most beautiful spots in the world is on top of that mountain overlooking the continental divide. You understand what the song says when it talks about purple mountains majesty. Mm-hmm when you see the snow on the mountains in the evening and it's purple. Yeah, the mountains turn purple. I, as a native Texan, I never understood what, what the heck Purple Mountains Majesty was, but mm-hmm. it really is. And that's the mountain range they were probably talking about. Um, but we have two other fellas on that trip that I, overall, and that's the thing that we want to explain to people that you can have bad moments in trips and still not ever think about them. Right. Um, one of them was, there's about, this is at one of her, her family's cabins. There's a good yeah, uh, you can't tell in the snow. It's a cliff. It's a cliff. I mean, it drops off pretty good downhill. Um, and our son fell down it. Well, he no, he didn't. So there's like four <laughs> feet of snow. He fell down Hold it. Hold on, no, there's like four feet of snow on the ground. Um, this is in March last year, and it, it got into the 40s. But you know how Colorado is; it can be 40 and sunny, and you feel hot, but the snow never melts. Um, it's not like Texas where you get to 40 and everything's gone. But it. I stepped on it without snowshoes. I'm sinking down to my waist. Matt could run over top of it. Mm-hmm. And so he basically ran down this hill. But once we figured out he was gone, which was quick, we were like, Where did get to him? I tried to get to him and I'm in waist deep snow. Yeah. And your aunt's screaming to get snowshoes. And we're like, <laughs> back, don't move because you might just sink. We didn't know how deep down there he was. Um, and it took oh. quite the effort to go get to him. And then in that same trip, well, Macy also got stuck down in the snow. Yes, she lost her boots in there um, because she thought she could walk. She did walk on top of it for a little while and then went straight down. But then they were on this sled down a little hill and the little hill led to kind of where like the driveway is. It's like an asphalt driveway that goes into the garage into the into the barn and so they had been doing this and doing this and doing this over and over and they were loving it and it was great well on one of one of her trips down her sled went right and not left like it had been and it sent her whole sled and body up underneath of my cousin's car and like you just heard a loud noise and then screams and like, and the screams were actually her and her aunt. It was also. It no, was Macy also, didn't make a yes, sound. She did. She didn't. It was she y'all screaming too. and your cousin. It could have. Oh, she been could have gotten hurt. Really, really bad. She slid enough under the car that she didn't just hit the bumper head on because she was going fast and had no control to like. Yeah, walk. she couldn't have stopped. I mean, I mean she could have taken have, her head off. It but, could have broken her neck or something. Uh, I think we have a video where I dropped my phone and dive to try to catch her. You know, the dad reflex. Um, you have super speed and super skills when it's a dad issue, but um, I didn't quite get to her. I ended up in the snow right with her. Um, we probably stressed my aunt out so much that trip, but looking back on it, it was a fun trip. It's just something seems to happen with us every single time. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the joy it is a circus but you know what it is our circus it is our circus these we, are our monkeys they are our monkeys and this is our circus um so you have to pick your circuses you have to pick your monkeys because life will throw a lot of them at you yeah. and you only have time for so many yep all right caitlin uh, we're about out of time for today is there anything that you would like to add to the travel tips top destinations or any of our travel fails i i think just experience um what works for you know, some people isn't going to work for everybody. Some moms out there don't want their children watching screens or whatever I say on vacation, just kind of whatever, not when we're there, but in route. Oh God, um, in route. If we didn't have DVD players or iPads, um, yeah. we wouldn't go anywhere. Let's just be honest. Um, we didn't that have those things true. growing up. And that's probably why our parents didn't take us anywhere. Now I will say, I mean, we do sticker books and markers well, and, and now color pages some of our children and all are, of that too. And they're of reading age. Yes. And so that they will read. Yeah. But, but definitely the electronics for us. Um, downloading the videos before travel on airplanes so that they're downloaded. Yeah. Um, I don't know if many, if everybody knows one. this, cause I didn't until a couple years ago, there's a lot of 
content you can download off of Netflix that is available offline once you download it. It's good for 24 but hours. It's only good for 24 so hours. You have to redo it before and you we've leave. made that mistake before because we thought, well, they're on there, so they'll yep. be on there and they are. And once you start watching it, the 24 hours starts. If you don't watch it at all, oh. it doesn't. But if you hit play and then hit pause, it still starts that time frame. Okay. So that is something good to know. That's a good travel tip. Yeah. You know, well. Um, like I said, that's about it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email at info at live uh, DM on any of our social media. We'll be happy to answer or tell you kind of what we do. Um, if you have any advice for us, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, go like us, subscribe, leave a five-star review, take a screenshot, share it with your friends, share it on your Instagram story, share it on your Facebook stories. Um, leave us a, uh, leave us a comment on the YouTube channel, subscribe, and always try to live it full.